Aloha and good morning. Welcome to Joyful Community Church Maui. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for your many provisions, Lord. Thank you for being with us, and we are so amazed at how accessible you are, Lord, how the word of God is so accessible. We can reach your word through even an app or on our phones, and we're just so thankful because it shows how much you love us, Lord. And so we just dedicate this service to you. We say, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate. Even if I run away, your love never fails. still make mistakes but you have the mercies for me every day your love never fails you stay the same you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning you love me your love never fails the wind is strong the wind is strong and the water's deep i'm not alone here on these open seas cause your love never fails is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side but your love never fails you stay the same you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. You make, you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good you make you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you stay the same you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain but joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage i don't have to be afraid because i know that you love me your love never you stay you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage i don't have to be afraid because i know that you love me your love never fails your love never fails
Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jesus, for sending. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. You didn't have to, but you did because you loved us. Thank you for your amazing love. We sing to you and we praise you today. Thank you. Joy. 
Let us pray for our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your provision. We thank you for blessing us in the way that you do. And we thank you, too, that we get to give to you, and that's not hindered in any way, O oh God. We thank you that we get to live and apply your word here at Joyful Community Church, Maui. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to our Joyful Community Church, Maui Facebook Watch Party. As we prepare our hearts for tithes and offering, we'd like to thank you for giving to Joyful Community Church. You may participate in this part of worship in several ways. By sending your check or money order to Joyful Community Church, P.O. Box 791, Wailuku, Hawaii 96793. You can also go to our website at www.jccmaui.com and make a donation on our Give page. Or you may choose to give online by way of our secure link that will be posted here throughout the service. Mahalo for your giving to the Lord. Aloha and welcome to our kids segment that we are calling Joyful Kids. So I'm Pastor Zina and this time is dedicated Specifically for you, Keiki, out there, okay? Because we miss you so much. Yes, all of your Joyful Community Church Maui teachers miss you. So, you get me today. Aloha. So, the topic today is Jesus Loves Me. And I'm going to start off with a song, okay? Jesus loves me. Along with that song comes a very quick lesson. We're not going to be before you too long. And it's all about how much Jesus loves you. So this is the Bible. It's God's inspired word. In here it tells us all how much Jesus loves us. And how he demonstrates his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross for us. So there should be no doubt that Jesus loves you. But should there be just a little bit of doubt? I want you to know that what you can do is read God's word, okay? Because in here, there's so much wonderful information. We actually call this God's love letters to us. And so that's how we're going to know. But I'm going to also leave you with a couple of scriptures too. But also, if you still need help, I have some activities to remind you how much Jesus loves you. And it's in the form of a shape, a heart shape, right? Because when we think about love, we think about hearts. And so one of the things that I did, there's two variations, is cut hearts out. Fold the paper in half, use a pen to be your guide, and then use the scissors to cut along, and then cut out several, several hearts and glue them together with paper. So for this one, I put Jesus loves you and I put Romans 5, 8. And so that scripture says that God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it's really fun. I enjoyed cutting hearts out and pasting them on the paper. But another one is, should you not have a scissors, you can rip paper. It's fine. So what I did here is draw a heart, rip paper, put glue, and then put, put all the ripped paper on there and wrote, Jesus loves you. And the scripture I also put down was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
So I hope you enjoy this and may you be reminded not only through God's word, but through the hearts that Jesus loves you. And with that, we love you too. Hi guys, I'm Pastor Ellie. I'm the youth pastor here at Joyful Community Church. And this is a new segment just for our youth. So exciting. Um, I'm happy that I get to be able to engage with you guys even though we're not able to meet. Right, so we're gonna jump right into it. So for the past couple months, we've been learning about the seven I am statements in the book of John, okay? So we've gone over five of them. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door, I am the good shepherd, and I am the true vine. So today we'll be learning Jesus' next statement, I am the resurrection and the life. Right, last week when you learned about the good shepherd, we learned how that directly correlated with his death and resurrection. <clears throat> and today we also see how this statement also correlates with his death and resurrection. So we'll be in John chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and flip to it. Um, as Bishop Fred says, you should get the word of God for yourself. Don't take anybody's word for it. Don't take my word for it. So we'll be in chapter 11, verse 23 and 20, uh, to 26 of John. Okay. Just so you know, for background information on this scripture, Jesus has just arrived at the place where... Um, he found out that Lazarus has died and has been laying in his tomb for four days, okay? So his sister Mary is in the house and his other sister Martha has come out to greet Jesus in the town. <clears throat> so starting with chap um, verse 23 and 24, Jesus says to her, talking to Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25 and 26 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Right? So this is a two-part statement. Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay? So when he says he is the resurrection, verse 25 explains this and says, He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, right? You see the, the death to life, that resurrection. And when he says he is the life, in verse 26 it says, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. So if we believe in him, though we may die, we have hope that our spirits will live, um, will live, right? And now, while we are alive in the flesh, we know he already has given us life in the spirit. And so because we believe in him, we have that assurance in Jesus that even though our bodies will pass away, we have eternal life with him, right? So later on in the story, we see that Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb. And Lazarus rises and walks out and presents himself to everybody. Jesus uses Lazarus and performs this miraculous sign in front of many Jews so they might believe him, that he is the resurrection, he is the life. Yeah, so that when the time came for his own death, his own resurrection, that they would continue to believe and have faith in him so that they might have eternal life. Even in times like today where we're surrounded by all this chaos and, and what may seem like death, we have great hope in Jesus that no matter what happens to our physical bodies, we, as long as we believe and have faith in Jesus Christ, that he came to earth, he lived a perfect life, he died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again on the third day, that we will have eternal life with him in heaven. Right? There's only one way to eternal life, and that is through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. Thank you, guys. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Joyful Community Church. Watch party or live stream, whatever you want to call it. Uh, continuing on with the series, Light, Love, Truth, from the book of 1 John. We're still going to be in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 19 today. And, uh, you know, I'm going to stay away from the coronavirus thing. Uh, everybody else is talking about it. Uh, 
you know, God just gave me peace about uh, a lot of what's going on today. And it's not that I'm being careless. I'm, I'm actually being careful uh, about what I do, where I go. And uh, I just thank God for his word and his protection. And so, you know, that's why I love doing series is because when I do series, uh, nobody can say, oh, the pastor heard what I did this week and that's how come he preaching about that or, oh, the pastor talking about this. Pa-. No, no, no. Uh, I don't play that. Homie, don't play that. Praise God. Uh, I always go according to what the word of God says, what God is telling me, what he's downloading to my spirit to give to the people that I shepherd. And I just thank God for the opportunity to give you the word of God. Well, today the title of the message is called God is Love. God is Love. The scripture we got here is Romans chapter 5 verse 8. He says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time where we get to share your message, the gospel message, the truth in love. Lord God, we ask that you use me as your vessel, that people may hear, Lord, that lives may be changed and transformed by the hearing of your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to be in 1 John again, chapter 4, verse 7 through 19. Now, if you have your Bibles, you should have your Bibles. Amen. Uh, you don't have to go home and get it. You're probably at home. So uh, go get your Bibles. Uh, open up your Bibles to 1 John 4, 17, uh, 4 7 to 19. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go there today. And again, we're talking about God is love. Now, we're not talking about any kind of love. We're not talking about uh, fluffy stuff. And we're, we're talking about the God kind of love. And we're going to explain a little bit about it today. Pastor Gina is going to read for me. Pastor Gina, could you read verse 7 and 8, please? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In the ancient Greek, John begins it beautifully like this. He says, agapetoi or agapomen, meaning those who are loved, let us love. He says, beloved. We talked a little bit about that the last time. Uh, We aren't commanded to love one another so we'd be worthy of God's love. No. It's not saying that we got to do something in order to get something. But we love one another because we have already received God's love. You see, if... Love is of God, like the scripture says, then he is the originator. He's the real OG. Then those who claim to be born of God, who claim to be his children, right? His offspring, Pideon, Technon. If you are born again and you claim to know God, you must be able to love one another. You must be able to love everybody in the body of Christ. Okay? Jesus said, how do people go know that we are his disciples, that we belong to him? Not how we love the world. It's how we love one another. Yeah? It's how we love one another. Though our love may not be perfected, which we're going to talk about later, it still must be present and should be an ongoing thing. See, you can't, I can't, we can't truly grow in in our experience of God without also developing a love for one another. John says, he who does not love does not know God. If there isn't a real love for God's people in your life, then your claim to know God is a false claim. And the Bible also calls us liars. (sighs) If there isn't real love for God's people in your life, I don't know. I don't know. I can't can't fathom that, how you can't love somebody else. What I can't fathom is how you can't love another Christian. Uh, How you can't love another brother or sister in Christ from another church. Yeah? Uh, We're one. We're one in the family of God. Some Christians want to draw closer to God without even loving people. And then there are also some Christians that want to minister to people without drawing closer to God. 
It doesn't work that way. See, this agape is a one-sided kind of love that the Father has for us because he's the originator. It's a concept of a self-giving love that gives without demanding or expectation. And yes, he loves sinners too. For God is love. He don't just love the Christians. He loves the sinners too. Yes, the sinners who are watching, or if you backslid, you know what? He still loves you too. Yeah? All you got to do is repent. You know what for do. Yeah, because he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. God is love. He loves all of us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, he says this, For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust, Jesus says. This is, yes, a common kind of love, but this is a love that is without expectations. He's going to give it to you whether you're going to love him back or not. This rich love and compassion of God describes his heart, his character, his very essence, and yet we're still unable to define fully the love of God. You see, God's love doesn't contradict his holiness because he loves anybody. His, 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 his love doesn't contradict his righteousness because he loves sinners, praise God. It doesn't compromise his, his perfect justice. It actually validates it. Everything God does, good or bad, but he only does good, bad in our eyes when, it, when things doesn't go our way. Everything that God does expresses his love towards his beloved us. Amen. Verse 9 to 11, Pasazina. In this love, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. See, God has provided his love to all of humanity. By the embodiment of Jesus Christ, his son, who tasted death for every man, for every woman, for every child. Love isn't only defined by the sacrifice of God the Son. It's also defined by the sacrifice of God the Father by sending his only begotten son, his only unique son, to be the propitiation for our sins, to be the payment, to be justice for us. The propitiations for our sins. And, and, and he also poured out his wrath to where his justice, God's justice, was satisfied because of Jesus Christ. And if God so loved us, we should also love one another. Yeah, I'm not going to get off that theme today. We got to love one another the same way. What God gives to you, he wants to flow it through you. Whether it be finance, whether it be a, a, a blessings, Right? Anything that God gives to us is not for us to hold on to. God gives it to you so he can flow it through you. Amen. I'm going to move on. Pastor Zina, verse number 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Amen. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, Now to the King Eternal... Immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Also, Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See, God can appear in, in human form. Uh, we've seen it all through the Old Testament. In, in other physical forms, uh, if he wants to, if he wants to reveal a part of himself to man. But he's, in essence, not a physical being. God is a spirit. Nobody ever seen God. Well, some of you might be saying, 
Well, didn't Moses see God? Yes and no. Okay? So if you guys know the story, you guys can go back to Exodus chapter 33. What happened is Moses wanted to see God. God said, you cannot look upon me or else you're going to die. Well, what God did is put Moses in the cleft of the rock. As he passed by, he put his hand. And when he passed by, he lifted up his hand. And so Moses could see his backside. That's what the scripture says, right? So yes, Moses did see him, but they never did see him in his fullness. Praise God. Hope I'm not going to get emails or anything from you guys who mad at me or think I are wrong. No, no, no. That's what the scripture says. Anyways, I'm not here to fight about the, the small kind stuff. Then John says, if we love one another, God abides in us. If we love one another, God abides in us. You see, it, when, we, when we hear that kind of stuff, well, when we hear love, we think of other things, you know. Some of us... Uh, you know, we love chocolate cake, but you don't really love chocolate cake. You like how it tastes, right? So uh, some of you love your phones. You're not going to marry your phone, right? Okay. So <laughs> the, the, the word love is, is misused sometimes, okay? But he says this, if we love one another, God abides in us. This is the greatest evidence of God's presence and work amongst us. To love. Our love for one another makes the invisible God, like we read before, makes the invisible God visible. Some people think that the greatest evidence of God's presence or work is power. Some people think the greatest evidence of God's presence or work is popularity. Some people think the greatest evidence of God's presence or work is passionate feelings, how it makes you feel. But the greatest evidence of God's presence and work is, I think I heard you through the TV. I think I heard you through the phone. His greatest work is love. Not passionate feelings, not popularity, not power, but love. It says this, his love has been perfected in us. The word perfected in the Greek is teleao, which means to accomplish, to fulfill, and to complete. So if we love one another, if we love the children of God, if we love the body of Christ, if we love one another, then the love of God is fulfilled in us. That's what the word perfected means. To be fulfilled, to be complete in us when we can love one another. Verse 13 to 15, Pastor Zena. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Amen. So, pretty much John is saying the same thing as he said in 1 John chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and also chapter 4. And now he's saying it again. It's talking about Jesus and God the Father. It's talking about the Spirit. It's talking about the Son being the Savior of the world. Uh, but what I want us to do is focus on this. Groups. Okay, groups. Today we're uh, discouraged to come together as groups. Ten or less. Amen. Uh, quarantine. So it, it's really hard to uh, show the love of God. Amen. If we're separated. But I want you to see when John talks about love, he's talking about how we love one another. The, the grouping. He uses these words that we see here. He uses the word we. He uses the word us. He uses the word Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, the oneness. And he also uses the word whoever. Okay. And so he, in some of them, he's very specific. Some he's very vague. Uh, and then some he's really general. Okay. So again, we're talking about groups. Whew. What do most religions have in common? This is what they have in common. The worship of a God or multiple gods. But the Christian faith 
has three key factors that separates itself from the rest of every religion. Number one, we have one God, but in three distinct persons that rings throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Number two, what makes our God different than every other God? God's nature is love. And the most wonderful thing of a God who is one, yet three distinct persons, and his nature is love, the greatest thing about this God that we serve, he loves his creation. He actually says that he loves us. Not only said it, he showed it. He showed his love towards us. Here's 13 to 15 in a nutshell. Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Our likeness. Okay, grouping. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So there's never been a time where God has ever been alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. They always had each other. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see it in the book of Genesis. But why did God make man? You, you ever thought about that? Pastor Zina, can I have you read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6? Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. So all that means is the father loves the son so much. Father loves God the son, Jesus Christ, so much that he creates man, us, to have fellowship with his son. Like how the father, son, and Holy Spirit has fellowship amongst one another. And the other reason why we were created, not so we, we could just have fellowship with the son, and we were created to bring glory to the Son, to praise Him. But then man sins and is no longer holy and without blame. So how is this fellowship mended that was broken, that the Father brought together? Man separated themselves from God because of sin. So how did God bring us back together? This is how He did it. The Father sent the Son to fix the fellowship. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, verse 17, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. So now we are no longer lost creation, but we are loved children of God. Hallelujah. But I'm not done yet. I'm going to talk a little bit more about these groups. Because I get the us, get the we, get the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and we got the whoever. We talked a little bit about that. Verse number 16, Pastor Zina. Go ahead. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Amen. This should be our response this should be our response, our reaction to God's love. See, problems arise when people say love is God because love barely defines God's character. But it is in God's character that love is defined. God is the standard. Yeah, whenever we talk about loving one another, God is the standard. We have a standard right here. The word of God is our standard. Everything. Yeah, our whole lives, the decisions we make, the places we go, the things that we say, the things that we do, yeah, comes from this, God's word. This is the standard for our life. You see, when people use the term love, they're not speaking of, of true love or, or the God kind of love. Their love is a fluffy, wishy-washy, how do you do kind of love that, that values niceness, Instead of what's really necessary for the other person's benefit. Have you ever told somebody the truth? Yeah? 
even with love, and they got mad at you. See, it seems like today political correctness is where everybody's at. Well, not shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people are at. Oh, we don't want to hurt their feelings. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to feel. It doesn't matter how they feel. I'd rather tell somebody the truth about Jesus Christ and about their sin, and they hate me. Then they not hear the word and go to hell. It's that simple. And it's because we love them. And you know what? We don't have to be harsh when we tell people the truth. You can tell people the truth again in love. Because you want them to be saved. You know why? Because God also wants them to be saved. If we are witnesses for him, we should be good witnesses. Amen? Okay? So tell people what's necessary and not just try to be nice. Amen? Then John says in this verse, verse 16, he says, and he who abides in love, the brothers and sisters, he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. You know, when we go to Kahumanu Mall and, you know, Pastor Zina, uh, she tells me, oh, I'm going to go to a store and uh, I'll meet you later on at the food court. Oh, well, you got to say I'm going to to the food court. What do you think? Nah. Anyways. But uh, Pastor Zina always tells me I'm going to, go to a store and I, I would ask well where are you gonna go and you know she's gonna tell me so I know how much time I have and anyways uh when she comes back the thing is I can tell what store she went into or a particular store that she went into because when she comes back and she sees me uh there's a, a smell there's an aroma on her that I know that she was in a certain store. Your husbands know it. Bath and Body Works. Okay? So <laughs> you can tell that she was in that store. But not only that you can tell that she was in that store for a little while. You can tell that she was in there for a long time. And, and touching stuff and grabbing stuff. And uh, I guess sampling stuff, smelling it. You know, a lot of the stuff smells good. But see, I, I know where she was hanging out. By the way she smells. What's my point? Well, God is love. And if you are abiding in him, then love will get all over you. If you are abiding with God, right? The smell, the scent of God will also abide in you. So if you want to know where God is at, if you guys want to know exactly where God is at, and you want to hang out with God, I'm not going to give you one church name. Yeah, you kick up to our church, see what's going on. But if you really want to know where God is at, look for love. For where love is, there God is. But a lot of people are doing what the song says uh, that was made back in the uh, 80s, uh, I guess, or 70s. A lot of people are looking for love in all the wrong places, amen, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> but if you want to look for God, look for love. Look for where love is at. Pastor Zina, verses 17 and 18. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Amen. John says that love is increasing among us. When we love each other, when we love one another. So we won't be ashamed when we see God face to face. When God asks, did you love your brother? Did you love your sister? Oh, yeah, I hang out with them all the time. I fellowship with them. We go to church together. Uh, we have meals together. We go to practices together. We go to Bible studies together. That's growing in love amongst one another. You know why? Because we are living love. Why are we living out love? So God can be seen. Why? Because God is invisible. 
But how we can see God? God is love. Amen? So if God is love, what is our purpose in the world? If our Father is love, what is our purpose? Here is our purpose. For us, His children, to be loving. Let me say that again. For us, His children, to be loving because our Father, God, is love. And so, if we're operating in love, guess what? You're not operating in fear. There's a lot of fear going on right now. Some people losing their minds about what's going on right now. But we need to operate in love. You know why? Because when you start thinking about other people, you're not thinking about yourself. But when, you know, when you're not thinking about yourself, God is thinking about you. And you can have comfort in that. We got to be loving. And when we are loving, therefore, that is where we are perfected. That is where we are full. That is where we are complete in his love. So no scared love. No scared love people. No say that you just love them just with words. You got to show. Amen. You got to show love and compassion. Pastor Zina, last scripture, verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. One more time, Pastor Zina. We love him because he first loved us. We love him, yeah, because he first loved us. God made the first move. John declares that uh, what, what reverberates in our hearts, we love him. Yeah, a lot of people say that they love God. I don't know. We talked about la that last week, okay? But we love him, John says. Then he says, why we love him is because... He first loved us. You know, when my wife uh, was pregnant, and she's pregnant with our children, and, uh, you know, we always used to talk to the baby in the belly, and uh, we used to sing to the babies, and, you know, that, that shows me that even before they were born, we already loved them. Even before they were created or manifested in this world, we already loved them. Guess what? God did the same thing for us. He already loved us. Way before we were created, way before we were born, way before we had jobs or a family or degrees or a house, He already loved us. But this is God. The greatest love of all. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God sent his son to die for us because he loved us. Regardless, listen to this. He loved us, died for us, regardless of the fact that we may never love him back. That's some deep stuff. That's agape love. That's not just agape love. That's the God kind of love. Now oh, that's love. A lot of us, we love people. We like people because we know what they can do for us. Yeah, there's always an attachment. There's always an expectation. But the God kind of love is you just do for people, even if they cannot pay you back. Even if they don't love you back. You know, been a couple of times, I, I felt sorry for people, so I bought them one soda, or I bought them food, and I gave them to them, and I tell somebody, hey, God bless you. You know, they tell me, F you. Bro, you don't know, say this to one kanak who just went bless you. But you know what? Hey, I had to walk away. Because you know why? When I gave, I gave because I never expect nothing. Yeah. And sometimes what people say, people nasty. People do that kind of stuff. But you know what? Just walk away. Just love them. Just love people. Yeah? Our reward is in heaven. Again, God is love. And if God is love, we are his children. We need to be loving. Not just to the world. Not just to people that we try to reach. Yeah? but to the brothers and sisters, the body of Christ.
Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. God, we ask that you bless us as we hear, heard your word today about love. Lord, Lord, there's so much more to learn about love because there's so much more to learn about you. So God, we pray that you melt our hearts, God. And uh, get rid of the ugliness, Lord, the residue, uh, things that we keep in our minds too. So we can love fully, Lord. So our love can be perfected. Lord, and the best place to, to practice our love is amongst brothers and sisters. We're pretty much, we won't be rejected. <laughs> you know, but we want to practice our love, Lord God. Help us to perfect our love as we love one another. Father, there are people out there who are listening right now that need your love, that need your touch. Father, we ask that you bless them. God, I know there are some people out there who have backslidden away from you, Lord, but you are calling them home even right now. The scripture says that for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him. He's here for you. Scripture says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In other words, for you to practice unrighteousness, you had to have been righteous first. I know you backslider. I know you sinner. Call out to Jesus because he loves you. He's waiting for you with open arms, ready to accept you. Call on his name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Father, we ask that as we close this portion of our service, God, we ask that you be glorified. Help us, Lord, to remember the we, the us, the whoever, and also Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, the groupings that you have us. Lord, we may not be able to, to gather together to, to worship, Lord, but uh, we can definitely gather together, Lord, because you are in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit. We are connected. We love you, Lord. Bless us today for you are love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, for this time, we just want to say that we love you guys. Be blessed. Tell somebody about Jesus. Share this a video with somebody. Let them know that they are love. Anyways, till next time. On Joyful Community Church, Bishop Fred, we love you guys. God bless you and aloha.